Hey, hey everybody, happy Tuesday. Welcome to part two and day two of Hate Week Against the Gamecocks. I am your host, Pigskin Pete. Uh, well, the video that I made yesterday uh, got exactly the response I was expecting from the Gamecock fans. And the reason I was expecting it is because it's the same response as I get every year around this time when I do this kind of thing. It's eerily similar responses to, dare I say, the Ohio State Buckeye fan base. Maybe it's more noticeable for me because I do more trash talking with Gamecock and Buckeye fans than just about anybody else. Uh, you could throw NC State in there, but they just not, don't have much of a presence on the internet. And when they do, they show up for the week of the game and then they disappear. And that's really been the case for most of you Gamecock fans too, which is unfortunate. You know, I mentioned on the Lunch Money Show last night that I'm taking applications. I need more Gamecock friends. If you're a Gamecock and you would like to be Pete's friend, I'm all for it. I need more of you in my life. I know you're out there because you showed up all in the comment section yesterday and you show up all year, every year when I do this. Um, you should hang around, you know? You don't have to, well, here's what you do. Put your pride aside for a second. Put your pride aside. Uh, forget that I'm a, a, a tater man for a second. You're already on the page watching the video. Just hit the subscribe button. Hang around for a couple of months. You know, no obligations. See if you like it here. And if you don't, you can skedaddle. Uh, you don't even have to like the video. Because if you don't like me, you're probably not going to like the video. But just hit the subscribe button. Um, but... The Gamecock playbook every year sounds eerily similar, like I said, to Ohio State. Uh, first of all, all of the comments that I get, well, I, well there might, with the exception of one, uh, all of the comments I get don't dispute any of the facts that I lay out in my trash talking. It's just you know, making fun of me, the way I look, the way I talk, the way I do videos. Uh, you know, uh, this guy's probably a hillbilly, probably lives in his mom's basement. You know, all the very predictable stuff um, that you get from them. No, no, not disputing anything, just, you know, throw, trying to throw haymakers to make me mad. You're not going to make me mad. I've been doing this a long time. Um, but there's several reoccurring comments that I get that are very predictable, like I said. One of my favorite ones. Oh, man. And this isn't just from Gamecock fans, either. Sometimes even Clemson fans say this to me, right? They don't get it. They go, oh, be careful, man. All that talking before the game. What are you going to do if they lose? What are you going to do then, Pete? <laughs> the same thing I do every day. I'm going to wake up. And I'm going to make a live show or a video speaking my mind. The difference between me and all of you people that type that shit is that if Clemson wins 100 to nothing on Saturday, I'll be here on Sunday talking about it. If Clemson loses 100 to nothing on Saturday, I'll be here on Sunday talking about it. The vast majority of you if you're not a subscriber, if you're just coming across this video or maybe somebody shared this video and said, hey, look at this idiot and this is your first time seeing me, the vast majority of you will only show up if South Carolina wins. That is a fact. It's been proven year after year after year. I can't, if I had a dollar for every time somebody told me this guy is gonna disappear after he loses to so-and-so, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. I'd be on a beach in Tahiti. So I'm not going anywhere. Um, and to me, it's cowardly to only talk trash after the game is over. It's easy to brag about a win when you've already won. It takes balls to talk shit all year and all week long when you have zero control over the results which is what I have. Zero control. The funnest part about this sport is the trash talk. That's it. 
the tradition, the pageantry, all of that we love about college football. But when it comes to the fans, it's all about ribbing each other. More than half of my subscribers, by a long shot, probably 75% of my subscribers and uh, supporters are not Clemson people. All over, every fan base you can think of, SEC, Big Ten, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, fans from all over. And we constantly, that's what we do every day. We talk trash. So don't take it personal, or if you want to, go ahead. I really don't care. Um, but back to the playbook. I'm, I'm, I'm going on a rant here. Um, yeah, uh, be careful. This guy will disappear. Oh, oh, th oh, this one. Well, this is a staple, isn't it? Clemson plays in the ACC. ACC sucks. They have a weak schedule. They, don't, they would be 7-5 in the SEC. This is what Gamecock fans do because they don't have anything else to hang their hat on. Nothing. Clemson blows them out of the water in every single measurable throughout history that matters. Every single one. They've got nothing else but the fact that they play in the SEC. Like that matters. You're one of the worst, if not the worst, program in the SEC. Okay, what, Vanderbilt? Um, and which is sad, too, because the Gamecocks have everything they need to be a successful program, except for competent people that run it. They've got plenty of money to compete. They've got the facilities. They've got the stadium. They've got a, 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 a large alumni base. What is there, 40-something thousand undergrads at South Carolina? And they can't put it together. Why? I mean, if I was a Gamecock, I'd be pissed about this. This is embarrassing. But the whole schedule is weak thing. Hey, guess what? You're part of the reason our schedule is weak every year, which, by the way, is also false. Be better, and maybe our schedule won't look so bad. We play you every year. And every year, you're one of the lowest-ranked teams on the schedule. So, uh, so miss me with the schedule talk. In 2016, when we won the Natty with Deshaun Watson, guess who had the number one strength of schedule and the number one strength of record in the country? That's right, Clemson. Guess what? They played in the ACC then, too. So I'll tell you the same thing that I tell Florida State people. I'll tell you the same thing that I, uh, that I tell Miami people. I'll tell you the same thing that I tell Virginia Tech people. Be better. You're making us look bad over here. Um, the other one is, uh, of course, the DJ thing. All of last year, all of last year, and it was warranted, the Gamecocks and everybody else, for that matter, ran around for the entire season talking about how DJ's a bust, DJ's trash, he's the worst quarterback in the country, what a, what a joke, what a dumpster fire. All warranted, okay? I, I, I wasn't going to argue with it. I mean, the, the stats last year backed it up. They were terrible. He was the worst quarterback in the ACC, one of the worst in the country. This year, a little bit different. But then you go out and get Spencer Rattler in the transfer portal. Of course, you get more false hope because that's the existence of a Gamecock fan. You exist off of false hope. And so then you start running around going, oh, we got the quarterback now. This is our year. Shane Beamer. Beamer ball, baby. We got, finally got us a quarterback. That was the only problem last year. We would have won eight or nine games. We had a quarterback last year. Now we got Spencer Rattler. Y'all better watch out. Watch out, SEC East. Watch out, Clemson. Spencer Rattler comes out there, looks terrible. Terrible. Let's look at some statistics here uh, for Rattler this year. I, I had to write this down. I can't remember all these statistics. I don't know what we got here. Uh, Spencer Rattler, tied for 48th in the country in yards. That's not bad. Uh, 14 touchdowns, tied for 66th in the country. Interceptions, nine, tied for 89th in the country. And QBR, 56.2. 
uh, what was that rate in the country? I think that was like 80th uh, in the country or something. It was terrible. DJ Uyunglele tied for 50th in yards, so very comparable to Rattler. They have almost the same amount of, uh, of yards. Touchdowns 21, which is 25th in the country. Interceptions 6, which is 45th in the country. And QBR 69.7, which is 38th in the country. So it's safe to say there's 130 teams in Division I football. And according to these stats, and I know stats don't tell the whole story. That's why I'm not a huge stat guy. Uh, but if you're going to make a head-to-head -head comparison at the end of a season between two quarterbacks, you have nothing else to go off of other than stats. Um, so with 130 teams in the FBS, what is that? what's half of that? 65. So an average quarterback would have around a 65th rating by definition in most of these stats. So DJ is above average in all of these stats. Rattler? Not. So it's safe to say, uh, based on everything that you told me last season, that DJ is an above average college quarterback and Spencer Rattler is crap. So there you have it. Now they got a lot of other problems over there. Uh, it's not all Spencer Rattler's fault. And that's what I said about DJ last year. I mean, DJ played terrible last year. He'll tell you that. Uh, but I was like, look, that. Yeah, we, all the blame can't go on DJ. There's a lot of problems on this offense. And I think the same is true for South Carolina. I don't think it's all Rattler's fault. Um, maybe Rattler's trying to do too much. I don't know. Because he knows the team around him can't do shit, so he's trying to do too much. And that's how you end up throwing a bunch of interceptions and making a bunch of big mistakes. Uh, anyway, to say the least, neither one of these quarterbacks have really lived up to their expectation but, uh, but I'll take DJ over Rattler every day of the week and twice on Saturday, okay? Uh, well, I guess that's going to do it for today. Yeah, make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe button. I'm serious. Guys, don't take this so seriously, all right? Don't. Look, if it, look, if it hurts your feelings, just don't watch. I mean, I want as many people to watch as possible. That's the reason I'm making the video. But I don't want to, you know, I don't want to ruin anybody's day or anything. Your boy, check it out.